a minute to start typing this out. But what we're going to start talking about is uh, data frame operations. Now we're going to all cover all the basics of uh, Spark data frame operations. And actually, I'm not going to be using Apple. I decided uh, we're going to be using Walmart, a Walmart data set. Um, <clears throat> So one thing that I'm also going to be doing um, is we're going to show, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of uh, some uh, shell basics. Okay, so this is using curl. So here I have um, the data set. Okay, uh, I actually downloaded on my GitHub page. Um, and so you guys um, can feel free to go there and download it. Um, and take a look at all the other stuff that I have on the GitHub page as well for this. Um, but what we're going to do is this, this curl method here, okay, or you can call it C-U-R-L depending on uh, how you want to pronounce it, okay. But I'm going to give it a web address location of my CSV file. And then I'm going to use this, I'm kind of using a pointer method in here to force it into and actually uh, put it out into a Walmart, this is, this is Walmart's ticker symbol, by the way, CSV file. And so if we run this, okay, it will download the data and it will put it, oh, it will put it right here, okay, so that we can actually interact with it. Um, I, uh, at least for me, whenever I'm using CoLab or I'm using a different, um, uh, uh, different tools, I have a tendency to like to use uh, shell scripts or bash scripts or something like that in order to interact with data and use a lot of command line tools because it is faster uh, and usually a more elegant solution than going and copying and making all kinds of copies of the data. Um, and I will probably, I'll probably make a couple videos for you guys about um, using data science at the command line um, uh, so that you can see all the types of really cool stuff that we can use um, to, to play with data that way. Um, so I'm going to kind of assume that you haven't ran everything, but you need to make sure and do run the preamble um, stuff that we talked about before uh, since we're using Colab. Okay, we need to make sure and let me just go up and show it. I'll show it one more time. Um, is to use these three cells. Okay, so install uh, Java, uh, Java 8. Okay, we're going to download Spark 3.0.1 um, and we want Hadoop 2.7. We're going to unzip, then we're going to install uh, the helper. Um, module find spark then we're going to use the os module to create um, environment variables for java home giving it the pointer of where we downloaded uh the javascript um or javascript i'm sorry java 8 and then also give it a, an environment variable for the spark home so that we'll be able to find it and then we also run this import find spark uh, so that again python knows where to find um, spark at. Uh, so let's go back down here to our data frame operations. Um, so these three are basically the same as what we've done uh, in the past. Okay, so import uh, PySpark SQL um, and we want a, a spark session. Okay. Uh, now we create our Spark session. In this one, I'm going to create an app name of operations. Again, get or create. And then we are also going to uh, do Spark, read, and now we're grabbing, this is different from before, is it a CSV. And again, we are using, we're going to grab the Walmart data set that we just downloaded from here, this curl file. And then now we're going to try and infer the schema. Again, we'll set it to true. And then we're going to set our header to true because again, I know I know this particular data set. Um, so let me give you guys a second and then I will start actually uh, running through things with you. Um, first off, let's just double check what, what our schema looks like and make sure everything came out correct. So we have a date, which is a string, which isn't actually 
100% correct there, okay, we'll probably want to change it to a timestamp um, later on. Um, open is a double, high is a double, low is a double, uh, close is a double, uh, adjusted close is a double, and volume is going to be a string. Um, and again, that's actually not correct as well. That probably needs to be um, a big int or a long. Um, but we can kind of go through that and maybe uh, try that uh, a little bit later. Um, so maybe let's go first and start looking at um, filtering data. Okay, so data frames themselves are going to allow us to do really, really quick uh, filtering. Okay, uh, so again, this is, can be based on any number of conditions. So if we want to, let's say, df.filter, okay, that's, that's the syntax that we'd be using to filter out rows. Um, and so let's say that we want to grab, uh, you know what, hold on, let's actually take, maybe take one more look at the data just to see here. Let's do um, df uh, dot head and let's say we want five. So then we can check the, the first five rows of this uh, so we can actually see the data. So um, these values are pretty decent looking. Okay, everything looks clean. Um, you can see that again, notice that this volume, okay? Notice that, that it, it told us that that volume was a string. Those are definitely not strings. So we may want to uh, use our structured, um, uh, our, our structure itself to actually create that, but um, let's not worry about that right now. I kind of want to just focus on using the filtering. Uh, and so let's say that we want, let's see, what, what day do we maybe want here? Let's say we want close. Okay, and I see there's 64, there's 63. Uh, so let's maybe grab a close uh, that is, I wonder if there's any that are less than uh, 60. Okay, and let's do dot show. There are none that are less than 60. Let's say if there are any less than 62. Yep, and there we go. And so now we will see here that from this data, we see we can actually grab any of the close values. So those are these close values that are less than 62. And again, we have to use this show function if we want to see it. Otherwise, if you take a look here and run this notice that again, it just tells us that it's a data frame and this is what we would expect each of the types to be. So if you want to see it, you got to tell it to show. Filtering itself. Okay. So we've, uh, we've actually ran through and we've gone through uh, filtering data. Okay. So we can use this close to uh, this filter. We want the close less than 62 and we want to show it. Um, let's maybe do something like, um, we want to find, we want to filter out the close that's less than 62, but we want to actually select, uh, let's say just the open. Okay, so let's show that. So for example, maybe you wanted to grab out all of these, but then you only wanted to grab out this uh, open uh, uh, column, okay? So you can do that, okay, by running them through. Now, if we wanted to grab two variables, okay, so we can do something like df.filter, and we want to grab our close uh, less than 62, and we want to select. And let's say that we also want to keep in um, the date. And we also want to grab in open. Oh, whoops. I used in a fill instead of filter. 
Um, <clears throat> and so now we see here that we actually have um, a little bit of more of a nice printout, okay? We actually have the date and then we have open. Again, this is, this is using uh, more of the SQL uh, type syntax. We can also use um, our very standard, um, our standard way like we were using with uh, pandas and those types of things. Um, so we can do the same thing here and let's do something like, um, mm, 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 mm. let's say df.filter and you know what, let's just stick with, with our example that we have here. And then you can do uh, df close is less than um, 62. So notice this is exactly what the uh, exactly the same output that we had before using the filter method and using the um, the SQL type version. But if you are more comfortable using something like we used when we were using pandas before, you can use the pandas way as well. Um, now we can also use, <clears throat> for example, with our comparison operators, we can grab. Um, using um, other different operators and commands. So let's do something like df.filter uh, and we want something like uh, df close is less than 62 and df open is greater than uh, 62. I don't know if anything's going to pop out. Whoops. Okay. So this and isn't going to work in this instance. Okay. We're going to get an error. Now, if we want to not have that error, we need to use the, again, here, you can actually see here, cannot convert a column into bool. Please use the ampersand for and uh, the pipe operator for or, and uh, the tilde for not. Okay, so it does actually give you that information. So let's let's use this and and rerun. Okay, and notice what are we getting now? Okay, we're getting another error. Now, one thing that's going on here, okay, is that this needs to be wrapped. Okay with parentheses, all right? So all of this, let's go and wrap this with parentheses and now run it. Okay, notice now it actually runs. So there are some very stringent things that need to happen, okay? Um, I wanted to show you kind of a, a run long, uh, running long list of errors that you may wind up coming in contact with because you need to be able to use the proper syntax when you're doing this. Um, that's why a lot of people, if you notice, will probably be going back to using the SQL syntax um, because they find it to be a little bit easier. Um, now, so let's maybe get something that actually has some results. Let's say, uh, and we want it, let's say 60, whoops. Okay, so then that actually gives us uh, some data that actually worked. Um, so what this is actually doing, okay, if you remember from our uh, Python basics uh, series that we had had earlier, okay, uh, you usually need to wrap all of these operations with parentheses to make sure, for example, like you want this to evaluate, you want, it wants to evaluate this first, okay, in the parentheses. And then it will need to evaluate this in the parentheses and then it's going to compare them. Um, so again, it does the internals first. And so another fun thing that we can do though, is we can add in the tilde, okay, to negate this and run it. And again, we're not going to get anything in this particular instance. Um, so let's go on to, we've done that, we've done that. Um, okay, and so maybe let's grab, let's grab something specific. Okay, so we want to do something like a df dot filter, uh, and we want df. Let's say open. 
is equal to uh, 60.98. Uh, okay, dot show. So here you can see that we can use the equivalence and we can see here that we actually have two instances where open is actually equivalent to uh, 60.98. Again, they are on the same day. So maybe, maybe looking at this, maybe we have some doubles of the data. Okay, going on. Um, and that's, again, that's okay too. Now, what we can also do though, if we want to is collect the data. So right now we're just showing you the data. We're not saving the data anywhere. We're not doing anything else with the data. So let's say that we wanted to, um, let me do this, let's do show one. Yeah, so here we just wanna see if we maybe just wanna see that one row. Oh, we can also show that one row. I forgot I sh should show you guys that. Uh, sometimes because you don't want, maybe it's gonna be a really large volume and you don't want to uh, overload the server, maybe your computer or anything else. So maybe you only wanna see the top five. You can put in um, a number in here, an integer in here to actually control how much you see, uh, very similar to how you would use the head with the pandas uh, module. Um, so if we go and do something like a df dot filter, and we want, uh, let's say, df. And I want, I want a very specific. So let's do some. You now there's doubles in a lot of this. Uh, that's okay. Um, so actually, let's just grab. Let's grab this section right here. And let's just repaste that in here. And instead of show, we're going to use the dot collect. Okay, and what this actually winds up doing is this is going to save it as a uh, Python object. And so let me, let's actually call this, maybe these are the results that you want to save. So we'll say res is equal to this whole piece here and run that. And so if we look at the, uh, let's say, let's just do the type of res and we want the first object. And there notice that this is a row object, okay? So we can also turn these rows into a dictionary, okay? Which is very useful for us. So we can do something like res zero uh, dot two, or no, not two, uh, as dict. Okay, and notice now this actually gives us a nice dictionary function. So with a dictionary, we can maybe bring this into a pandas data frame, or we can do it into something else. So once you can use, for example, so now what this is actually kind of all culminating in, okay, is you can grab, um, grab all of this data, use Spark to interact with it, and then you can bring it back in to a pandas data frame and to maybe a more comfortable environment for you. Uh, particularly once you get a smaller data, uh, a data set as well. Um, let's go through and do one more thing. So we can do something like for item in our res zero, and we can also uh, print out each item just so we can see this. And again, if you just want to see each of the pieces of the data there as well, and maybe just for, for completeness, let's do something like import pandas as pd and then let's do something like pd dot data frame and let's put in the res as dict oops why oh, didn't it want that oh it's because it has scalar values in it okay so maybe we can do this as something else oh it's because there's only one so we can maybe do series okay so there um and if we wanted to maybe do uh, other things, we can with them. But this is just showing you that you can you can start out with Spark, and you can go all the way through, and then you can get back into something that you feel a little bit more comfortable with. Um, and I think I think that's where I'm going to probably leave it off.